Happy Sabbath, everyone. Thanks to God for another privilege to come before you today and to share the word of God with you. The topic of my today's sermon is humble yourself. The astronomers told us that nobody can count the number of galaxies in the space. But they said that within the observable universe, that we could have about 100 billion galaxies. And that with time, it could become, um, it could get to 200 billion galaxies as um, the scientists keep improving on the Hubble Space Telescope that they used to view the um, galaxies. And they said that any of these galaxies that have less than 100 billion stars is considered a small galaxy. And they made a speculation that these galaxies were born um, after a coagulation of some atoms that took place after the Big Bang, which is an explosion, as they claim. But in November 5, 2012, NASA and other bodies that are into um, space science announced a discovery of a galaxy that is located 13.7 billion light years away from Earth, which means if we want to travel to this galaxy from where we are, it will take us 13.7 billion years to arrive. Wow. Let us turn our Bible to Isaiah 55, verse 8. Isaiah 55, verse 8 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, said the Lord. For as the heavens are higher above the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. And the question is, how far is the heaven higher than the earth? The one we know today is 13.7 billion light years away. 13.7 billion light years away. And that is how wise we are when you compare us to God. That is how pure our paths are when you compare us to God. And that is how big we are when you want to compare us to God. 13.7 billion light years away. They try to compile the number of stars in the galaxy. Since they said that nobody can count the number of galaxies in the space, how can they come up, come up with a number? They can't come up with a number. One of them just said something, just say, assuming we have 10 trillion stars in the space, and we multiply it by the number of our stars that we have in the Milky Way galaxy, which is estimated to be um, 100 billion stars. They say if you multiply 10 trillion stars by 100 billion stars, that you could give something, a number. And they come, came up with a number that has one and 29 zeros, a very big number, 100 octillion stars. And after they did that, they said it's a gross underestimate, underestimation of what is out there in the space. It's a very large number. But let's see what is written in Psalms 147 verse 4. Psalms 147 verse 4. He tells the number of stars he called them all by their names. Great is our Lord and of great power. His understanding is infinite. God knows the number of stars and he knows them by their name. How many names can you remember since you were born? All the people that you've met in your lifetime. How many can you remember? How many names can you remember? This is how great God is. He remembers all these things he, remember, he calls all of them by name. This place is simply talking about the space. It's not talking about us. 
The Bible even says that all the hairs on our head, they are counted. God knows all of them. He has a memory that is infinite. How big is our own memory? We don't even have memory. In that case, we don't even have. The man, David. David um, was a king, a man after God's heart. And as we all know, David did not travel to the space. David did not enter any spaceship. He was a man that rode on chariot all his life. But look at what he said in Psalms 8, verse 3. Psalms 8, verse 3. David said, When I consider thy heavens, the works of thy finger, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you visit him? When you consider all these things that God has done, his memory, his power, his greatness, then you come back and say, what is man that God visits him? That Jesus Christ visited us and stayed with us for um, 30 years plus. Okay. Um, you know, yesterday we had a special song by German. He said, who taught the song where to stand in the morning? And who told the ocean, you cannot go this far? It's God. Let us see what Isaiah said about man. The question that David asked, what is man that you are mindful of him? Isaiah 40 verse 6. Isaiah 40 verse 6 says, And the voice said, Cry. And he said, What shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and the goodness thereof is as flower of the field. The grass wither, the flower fades, because the spirit of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people is grass. This is what we look like before God. Grass. 40, Isaiah 40 verse 17 says, Behold, all nations before him are as nothing, and they are counted to be less than nothing and vanity. To whom then will you liken our God, or what likeness will you compare unto him? cannot compare God to anybody. You cannot compare Jesus Christ to anybody. And when you look at these differences between us and God, it will give you an insight of how much Jesus Christ humbled himself. How much Jesus Christ humbled himself from a kingdom, from a seat of wisdom, seat of power, seat of authority, where the angels and other creatures worship him. He humbled himself and came from glory to grass. He humbled himself to nothing. Not even nothing. This, the, this place says the whole people are less than nothing. If the living are less than nothing, what about the dead? So Jesus Christ humbled himself below less than nothing. He humbled himself below less than nothing. That was how much Jesus Christ humbled himself. He humbled himself. We, we cannot even describe it how much he did. What about us today? How much low can we go? How much low can we humble ourselves? Because how we humble ourselves determines how much living that we have removed from our life. You, you, you may claim that you removed it all, but how much you humble yourself will determine how much living you remove from your life. Jesus Christ went below nothing. He humbled himself completely below nothing. How much can we humble ourselves? Why do we still have quarrel amongst us? Because we cannot humble ourselves. Because we have, we, our ego is so high, we don't want to bring it down. Jesus Christ left us with this ministry that we also have to humble ourselves just as he did. And he, when he humbled himself, he didn't leave anything behind. He humbled himself completely. How much can we humble ourselves? In our various families where we're having problems among ourselves, how much low can we go to fix the problem, to heal the wound, you know? Jesus Christ was, we caused the problem. Jesus Christ didn't have any problem. We caused the problem. We caused the gap between us and God. But Jesus Christ filled it completely. He built the bridge completely. 
when we have issues with our fellow brother or sister, how do we handle it? Do we fill half of the gap and expect him to complete the half? No. Jesus Christ wants us to humble ourselves. God wants us to go down completely and humble ourselves so that people can call us disciples. And within ourselves, we can say we are indeed disciples of God. Let us see um, Philippians 2, verse 5. Philippians 2, verse 5. Philippians 2, verse 5 says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the image of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon himself the form of servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in the fashion of men, humbled himself and become obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. He's saying, let this mind be in you. Let this mind be in us. Not only um, during the days of unleavened bread. It's something that has to be in us. Something that has to be part of us. What God is even asking us to do is to remove falsehood from our life. Is Jesus Christ, what Jesus Christ gave up was reality. What he was. He was, he was, he was God. He gave it up. But what God is asking us to give up is not even part of us. God has not even asked us to give part of us. Yeah, he's asking us to give away pride. Something that is not even part of us. That's what he's asking us to do. And it's very difficult for us to do it. But it is very necessary as Christians as followers of Jesus Christ, it's very necessary for us to let this same mind, this kind of mind that was in Jesus Christ, that's, that is still in Jesus Christ. Because this mind has been in him right from time when he became the Passover lamb in Egypt. And all these days, Jesus Christ has been so humble. And we have to be humble. Jesus Christ knows how to climb up and he knows how to climb down. If you only know how to climb up and you don't know how to climb down, you have to, you have to learn how to climb down. Because you can only climb up from the base. You have to start from the base. So brethren, let this mind be in us that was also in Christ Jesus. It's not very easy to be humble, but we practice. We practice. If you practice it, you force yourself on you to practice it, to become, find out that you become humble. And then when we become humble, we will have less problem. But we'll be able to solve a lot of problems because what causes most of the problem is our ego. I want to conclude by reading Philippians 2, 5 to 8 again. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the image of God, thought it not trouble to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon himself the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in the fashion of men, humbled himself and become obedient unto death, even the death of the cross.